Good morning and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition webinar series. My name is Lee Doubleday and I'm with the Imagine America Foundation. I'm excited about today's webinar with Lincoln Tech. Lincoln Tech has 22 campuses located throughout the United States and these campuses have been educating tomorrow's workforce since 1946 and are accredited by the Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges. And on today's webinar, we're gonna be discussing Lincoln Tech's Grand Prairie Campus. This campus has an amazing history of graduating successful technicians for the automotive, diesel, and collision repair industries. Lincoln Tech is also a 20 year sponsor of the Imagine America Scholarship and Award programs, having provided admissions-based financial aid to more than 10,000 enrolling Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time from our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation and our scholarship programs to our website, which is www.imagine-america.org. Joining us today to discuss career and technical education is Josh Kean. Josh is Lincoln Tech's high school ambassador and has been helping students reach their career goals and working with high schools with Lincoln Tech for over eight years. We're excited to have Mr. Kean join us today to chat with you about career and technical education. But before turning the program over to Mr. Kean, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be approximately 30 minutes long with polls during the presentation like the one that's in front of you right now uh, for you to answer and engage with our presenter. All participants can also submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation, I will then present any questions offered by the participants. We'll address as many questions as possible and, and provide written responses and follow-up emails if we do not get to them. So, Without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Josh Kean. Josh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Lee, I appreciate that. Uh, good morning to all of you, uh, teachers and guidance counselors that are here with us today. I appreciate your time. Um, you know, as we go through today's uh, uh, presentation, there's gonna be some polls that pop up. Um, if you would be, uh, if you would participate in those, it'd help us uh, kind of cater this uh, towards you all a little bit better. So uh, once again, my name is Josh Kean. I'm the Director of High School Admissions here with Lincoln Tech, and um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, right now in our country, uh, there is a gap that exists between the skills employers, one of their team members, and the skills held by most of today's workforce. Um, you know, for us here at Lincoln Tech, we've been turning graduates out uh, for over 70 years that have helped, you know, students bridge that gap and launch rewarding careers uh, in anything but desk jobs. And I think that's very important uh, to, to note. And, and we're going to talk about why uh, CTE education is so important here today. So for our Grand Prairie campus, just a quick overview, um, we have a, a Hussman Tech Center that's dedicated to manufacturer specific training that leads to careers with one of the top world's top makers of commercial refrigeration equipment, uh, industry standard CNC equipment provided by Haas Automation. We have more than 60 welding booths, uh, fully equipped auto and diesel bays. And then here at the Grand Prairie campus, we have a dedicated training space for BMW's Mini Cooper Step uh, program. That is a service technician education program. Um, right now, we are conducting our high school presentations, both in person and virtual. Uh, those presentations uh, can be used in any type of virtual format. So Google Meets, uh, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and like I said before, pretty much any other platform that you all are using. In our high school presentations, we talk a lot about uh, defining a pathway to success, uh, researching career paths, post-secondary educational opportunities, managing a budget, uh, just getting by. And this is a great talking point for a lot of high school students. Um, they know that things cost money. And when we start to talk about money, um, you know, you always ask them, how many of you just want to get by in life, right? And ironically, no hands ever go up. Because as you're asking that question, you know, just getting by means no new tires, no new uh, fishing rods, or the latest and greatest hunting uh, gear for these uh, students, no new mud tires on your truck, right? There's nobody out there that just wants to get by. And really that's when we start to see the wheels uh, start to turn. We talk about the value of post-secondary education 
and starting your career versus finding a job. And here at Lincoln, we use uh, the acronym for job is just over broke. And uh, you educators here with us today can really appreciate the value of a career where you've got retirement, 401ks, uh, possibly pension plans out there. And that's really what we're trying to get across to our students to help them understand that job hopping, going from place to place, maybe chasing that quarter, 50 cent, or even a dollar raise at times, really isn't sustainable over the long haul of a career. And then we talk about financial aid and scholarships. I know for our guidance counselors here, it's important that we are uh, getting that information out and spreading the word that these students need to fill their FAFSA out uh, so that they can understand that uh, their educational investment is affordable. And then we'll, we, we talk a lot about scholarships and we're going to talk a lot about those here today. So um, as I go to the next slide, I'd like uh, for you all to just kind of participate here with me. Um, and I told you we talk a lot about success, right? And the definition of success is the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. And really and truly at the end of the day, that's what these students are looking for. They're trying to find their purpose in life. And as a 17, 18, 19 year old young man or young lady, that's a difficult decision to make. They're looking at trying to map out the rest of their lives uh, in a senior year, trying to pick something um, that they feel is going to give them the best opportunity for success in the long run. Now, as an 18-year-old uh, kid myself, uh, when I was trying to look for schools, I was trying to figure out what, what and where was going to give me the best opportunity for my success. And, you know, that's what we need to be doing for our students here today. And, you know, the first thing that we talk about is defining success. How do you define success? And I would ask all of you the same question. Now, I'm sure that over the years, all of your definitions of success have changed, and rightfully so. And these high school students, they will change their definition of success too, but they've got to have an initial uh, definition of it to figure out where they're going. Uh, can they visualize the success? What is going to help them along the way uh, get to where they want to be? And then we talk about planning for it. What is your plan? What is your backup plan? And uh, I would encourage all of you to ask yourself those questions. You know, can you define it? Uh, can you visualize it? And have you planned for it? Or are you still planning for uh, your success in the long run? And I really like to quote here at the top of the screen. There's a driving force inside every human being that once unleashed can make any vision, dream, or desire a reality. And that's just so true, right? And then you look at the picture there below uh, where you've got problems and obstacles and crashes and troubles and difficulty. And at the top of that mountain, there's that, that ultimate goal of success. And most of us have experienced that. And we have learned from those troubles and crashes and obstacles in order for us to get there. And uh, when we come into a classroom, that's really kind of what we start off with because we understand that there's going to be obstacles and bumps and bruises along the way for them. Uh, but at the end of the day, truly, uh, how we become better people is how we learn from those uh, failures that we, uh, you know, experience along the way. Uh, so um, as you take a look here at the next uh, slide that I've got up here, I talked about CT education. Why is CT education so important, right? Our country was basically found upon blue collar jobs. And if you look over at my graph here, uh, on the left side of the screen. Uh, most companies, when they look at setting a corporate strategy, they're looking at long-term workforce planning. Now, why is that? Well, it's because right now we don't have enough people that want to get into the skilled trades, whether that's a stigma because it's a dirty job, whether they don't feel that they can make a good living, whatever it is, there is definitely a stigma and there is not enough uh, youth getting into these opportunities. I mean, I've given you some little snapshots, uh, some little snippets of some things. Um, you know, I, I like the first one, right? One third of CTE students are enrolled in programs preparing them for careers in leading industries. 81% um, of high school uh, student dropouts say that real world skills education would have kept them in school. Again, you know, when I first started out with Lincoln, I was a high school admissions rep, um, and it was really awesome to see walking into those classrooms. But, you know, these students are preparing. Uh, lots of them are preparing for the workforce, and they have a, a great pathway ahead of them. They know where they're going. They know what they want to do. And I think it's very important to continue to introduce our students uh, to CT education as early as we possibly can. 
Um, now, how many of you guys have heard of the skills gap? And this is something that's very real. And by 2028, employers across the country are projected to add more than 3 million jobs in fields that you can train for here at Lincoln Tech. So if we go across the board, uh, the job opening, 740,000 jobs available in automotive, 442,000 in diesel truck and heavy equipment, 428,000 in HVAC, 946,000 job openings in electrical and electronic systems. Now, if 2020 has taught us anything, uh, it's really taught us about essential workers, right? In all of these jobs, we would deem to be essential. Um, you think about diesel. Uh, diesel is truly the backbone of our country, whether it's the infrastructure, right? Our roads, uh, our buildings, um, everything that we have has been touched by diesel at one point or another throughout its life cycle, the food to our grocery stores. And behind those diesel trucks, uh, behind those heavy equipment, uh, the heavy equipment, there are technicians that are maintaining those uh, pieces of equipment and those trucks to make sure that all of our goods uh, make it to the stores. Um, HVAC, 420,000 jobs, right? Here, um, you know, where I currently live, it's cold, 29 degrees this morning. If my HVAC goes out, uh, I don't know anything about HVAC, right? I don't know how to get out there and fix it to make sure that it's running properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call an HVAC technician. And to make a service call in the middle of the night, I can pretty much guarantee you that that's not cheap. Um, so when everybody else was being laid off uh, in the U.S. due to COVID-19, these folks were out there still working. Let's talk a little bit about our history and tradition. Uh, Lincoln Tech first started back in 1946, and our mission was to help returning World War II veterans uh, build marketable job skills to re-enter the civilian workforce. Uh, over the past 70 years, Lincoln has graduated over a quarter of a million students from 22 campuses in 14 states. Students from a variety of different skills, trades, programs who have taken their lives into new rewarding directions by launching careers in fields that they love. Now here at the Grand Prairie campus, we have an automotive technology program, CNC machining and manufacturing, diesel and truck technology, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and welding technology. So here at Lincoln, uh, one of the benefits uh, for a student being able to, to start school with us here uh, is that they're able to finish faster and be able to start their career faster. So, you know, most of our students are able to graduate between eight and 13 months, very hands-on teaching. We have a career services placement um, that will help them both in school and out of school. Instructors with professional real world experience, uh, national and local advisory boards, and financial aid and scholarships available to those that qualify. So let's take a look at our programs. Um, our programs consist of diesel, diesel technology. This is a 13 month program, uh, NATEF certified curriculum. Students are gonna learn to do engine rebuilds, transmission uh, teardowns. Uh, they're gonna learn a little bit of welding, get some hydraulics, systems-based training. Uh, the automotive program is 13 months. Again, it's a NATEF certified curriculum. Uh, large shops, auto bays, lifts, lots of engines for these students to get their hands-on learning. Welding is an eight-month program. Um, arc welding, uh, Megan TIG welding, blueprint reading, fabrication process, uh, and there is also a pipe welding program here at the Grand Prairie campus. Uh, collision Repair is a 12-month diploma program, and uh, this is a really cool program for students that are really looking to maybe uh, work and go to school at the same time. This is a blended learning format, so uh, four days a week, uh, they're in school, uh, they're working with their hands, and all the tests, quizzes, and, and assignments that you would typically find in some of the other programs are done outside of class. Um, as far as our HVAC program, it's a 10 month diploma program. They're gonna learn heating, uh, air conditioning, refrigeration, uh, green technology systems. And then our CNC program uh, is a 10 month diploma program. And uh, some of the things that they'll get there in that program are advanced multi-access machining, blueprint reading, CNC turning setup and programming, manual machining, CAD and CAM training. Now, I'm sure that most of you on this call today can recognize at least one of those uh, school affiliations that we have. Now, these affiliations uh, are relationships that we have built over the years. And these are uh, relationships that lots of our students uh, go out and they work for. Um, you know, one thing about 
Lincoln Tech is that throughout our history, we have been able to develop longstanding relationships with lots of these companies. The problem isn't being able to find students opportunities uh, after their time here at Lincoln. You know, if they're here for the right reasons, those opportunities will be there for them. Our problem is finding enough people that want to be out into these industries. So let's talk a little bit about career services. Um, you know, this kind of starts in the classroom and, and I'll tell you why. So when we get into the classroom, we talk about personal branding, right? You know, uh, somebody, the way they look, the way they talk, the way that they act, that is their brand. That is their advertisement. We really try to stress that to them um, because some students really just don't quite understand that yet. So here at Lincoln, we help them uh, with their e-portfolios, really develop themselves a social media presence. And that's also something that we discuss when we're in the classroom. You know, we try to help these students understand that once they put something out there on social media, it's out there to stay, whether it's on Snapchat or Facebook or Instagram is really, really, you know, they've got to be careful about what they're putting out there. Um, we typically have two career fairs a year that will average, you know, upwards of 100 employers. Uh, we do employer presentations, we take students out on field visits, and then we do part-time placement assistance as well. So for those students that are looking to, you know, work while they're in school, we have those opportunities uh, available for them. Now, as far as the back-end portion of it, we really help with building a resume, interview prep. So a lot of our students, they're great with working with their hands, and we know that. Uh, but sometimes they can really struggle in those interviews. They can really struggle to answer those difficult questions. So uh, we also help work with them on their soft skills uh, so that they, when they go into that dream job interview, that they walk out very confident uh, that they've nailed that interview with that employer. Um, we, we teach them how to, you know, fill out effective online applications. You know, we give them personal access to job sites and then also all the relationships that we have built uh, for, with all of these employers throughout the years. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, what really separates Lincoln Tech apart from a local community college or maybe some of the other schools out there? And I would tell you uh, that this is probably one of the most important ones is the outcome, right? At the end of the day, that's what we're all looking for. That's why I went to college. That's why you went to college. That's why anybody goes to college because they're looking for that great outcome. And if you look around the, the, the uh, slide that I have here, nearly nine out of 10 of our students that graduate our collision repair program are placed out into the workforce. Four out of five for automotive, nine out of 10 for CNC and manufacturing, four out of five for welders. So the students are getting the results that they're desiring if they're there and they're able to show up every day and, and be in class and do as asked of them. Now, Grand Prairie is what we call a destination campus. So a lot of our students um, are moving away to come to our school. <clears throat> so a lot of families ask, well, what about housing? We work with a company called Collegiate Housing Services, uh, and they have uh, shared apartment style housing. And these are some of the pictures of the apartment complexes that our students will be living in. The students have access to all of the amenities of the apartment complex. So again, this is one of those areas that is kind of an uneasy thing for a lot of students because they're leaving home, they're leaving their comfort zone, they're unsure, they're unsure about living with somebody else. And, you know, they've got a great place to move into so that they're very comfortable in, in their educational time at Lincoln. Now, one of the most important things for a student is how are they going to fund that investment uh, in their education? And I think a lot of times today, students look at education as something that is too expensive or it's unaffordable. They're not sure how they're going to quite uh, pay, be able to pay uh, for their education. So uh, we're going to go through, you know, financial overview and some types of financial aid that are available to these students. So there's federal and state student aid available. Um, you know, if a family's fortunate enough to stick some money away, they can make cash payments. Uh, there's parental loan options. There's lots of scholarships to which I'm going to talk about here in just a second. Uh, institutional loans, uh, there's federal loans, and there's different types of grant uh, options out there for students. And here at Lincoln, over 90% of students that attend um, qualify uh, for federal student aid. So scholarships, everybody wants to know where's that free money? 
Well, there's a lot of it out there and there's a lot of it that goes unused every single year. The first one I wanna talk about is the one that we're here with today, Imagine America. Uh, there's scholarships available through their foundation, uh, Skills USA and FFA. So if you have students that compete in either of those two um, you know, competitions, whether it's at the national level, regional level, state level, there's anywhere between a $500 scholarship and a full tuition scholarship available to those students that compete in these type of uh, events. There's scholarships through the SEMA Foundation. Uh, there's scholarships through Mike Rowe. Uh, he is a huge advocate of the skilled trades. He's got his own foundation uh, called Mike Rowe Works. Uh, lots of opportunity available for students there. And then here at Lincoln, we also have our own scholarship test. Um, I have a link that I'm able to send out to each and every one of you here today. Um, and you can have your students take it. It's a 20 uh, question test. The student gets 20 minutes to take that test. And if a student is, you know, scores high enough, um, we start out with $1,000. And if they make it to the next tier, it's $2,000. At the end of the day, a student is able to win up to $15,000 uh, by taking that test. There are some requirements that uh, once they submit that test, if they want to you know, continue on in our scholarship program, they submit a portfolio. That portfolio has accomplishments. In it. So whether they've, you know, community service or projects that they've done, if they're an Eagle Scout, these are all things that we want to know about our students. But again, lots of opportunities. Uh, so if you have a student who competes in a Skills USA competition at the state level and finishes second, and then they do very well on our scholarship test, and there's a lot of opportunity for these students to help fund their education. And this year at Lincoln, we're going to award over $14 million in grants and scholarships to qualified students nationally. So uh, when we finish up, um, if, if you've got some questions regarding that scholarship test, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, I'd be more than happy to share that link with you all uh, in the chat box. However, I can get that out to you so that your students have the best opportunity to be able to help uh, fund that education. So how does a student get to come to Lincoln Tech? That's another great question. So we have what's called a closed application process. So a student just can't go online and apply to come to Lincoln Tech. They've got to sit down with one of our admissions representatives, right? Within, within that process, it is designed uh, to determine a student's eligibility for recommendation in the program. Is this the right fit for this student? And at the end of the day, if it is, uh, then we'll recommend that student for acceptance and then we will move them through the application process. So again, you just can't go online and apply. You've got to sit down with one of our representatives, you know, and this is an interview. So, um, you know, they've got to be prepared, dressed appropriately. If they can have uh, their transcripts available or if they've got a resume complete, we'd like to see that. Letters of recommendation from you all, from guidance counselors and teachers. Making sure mom and dad are there uh, to be part of that you know, support system or that their guardian is there. Uh, and then here at Lincoln, we do not have a GPA requirement. So uh, we don't have within our programs, um, you know, we don't have the math, the English, the science, the social studies in the, in the general curriculum. Uh, a student can make this a full on associates program. And in most cases graduate within 17 months, which is still uh, you know, significantly less time that they would spend at a community college. I would say that's one of the other main differences in between us and the community colleges. So uh, I would like to thank all of you uh, for your time here today. Um, if this is something that uh, is, is piqued your interest and you'd like to schedule a presentation with one of my admissions representatives, um, there's a couple ways that you can get in touch with me. Uh, one is you can uh, just respond to uh, the uh, poll that's up right now and um, we'll make sure that we get your information from that. Uh, two, you can scan this QR code. So you can take out your cell phone and you can open it up your camera, scan that QR code, fill that information out. Um, and I will make sure that I've got uh, my admissions representative who services your area reach out to you directly. Um, you can text me, you can call me. Uh, my phone number is right there. So 615 Four zero six zero four four seven. Like I said, you can either text or call, or you can just simply shoot me an email, and that's J Kehan, J K E E H A N, at LincolnTech.edu. 
Uh, so any of those ways you can contact me directly. Um, and then, like I said, too, if you're really wanting to, you know, get this scholarship link out to your students, um, I can put that in the chat box or I can get that to you in some way. So once again, I really appreciate your time today. I hope that you all learned a little bit about what we do here at Lincoln Tech and how we can help your graduating seniors uh, take the next step. So, Lee, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on back over to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we are now going to be opening this session for the question and answer portion of uh, today's session. So if you do have any questions for either myself or Josh, feel free to uh, submit your question in the Q&A uh, feature. Uh, Josh, the first question that I have that's come in, uh, this person wants to know um, if the dorms are co-ed. Uh, the dorms are not co-ed. Okay. All right, great. Um, and we had another question that came in. This person wants to know if there are um, GPA requirements to go to Lincoln Tech. There are not GPA requirements. Okay, I think you had mentioned um, that it's really, it's an interview process uh, that they would need to have. So, um, and I see you just posted that scholarship link there. I will also be sending the scholarship link to you with the recording of today's presentation so that you can Feel free to pass that along to any of your high school seniors. Um, okay, I think that kind of wraps it up for the question and answer portion of, the, of today's presentation. So uh, just a few uh, house cleaning items. I will be uh, sending this recording out to you probably tomorrow morning. Um, and then we also uh, would like to thank each and every one of you for participating in today's webinar with Lincoln Tech and Josh Kean. Um, I would also like to thank Josh for sharing with us today's presentation and encourage each and every one of you who are interested in contacting him to contact him directly with any future questions. I will include his email address in the correspondence that I send to you tomorrow morning. And on behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, I just want to thank you and goodbye.